So what started off as my college project ended up becoming uh, a small little business. And see, I'm a Gujarati. At the end of the day, I have to have something of my own, right? So today, you you live in a content world. Uh, how the algorithm works is you don't have to be perfect. Yeah. You just need to be consistent. My goal is to work with brands that are the next in 50-50. There are only 50 brands I need to work with. It's not like dating. We don't date with clients. Yeah. We, we marry them at the same time. We are in a polygamous relationship with four or five clients at the same time. Over the last 12 years, I've worked with 98 brands. So I, I couldn't speak in English uh, up until the 10th grade. You know, Starbucks has these uh, these reusable cups. Yeah, you buy one. So we invested in one reusable cup. You know, so everybody, every time they go to Starbucks, the team sits and they have their cups there. And we need to fill it with water. Helping you build value over valuation. Hello everyone, welcome to the Breaking Uneven podcast. We love to talk shop, uncover the beauty of failures and play a few games. Today we have with us Neil Shah, the founder of Mentrepreneur and the co-founder of Creator. Neil, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. So, all right. Um, Neil, you completed your bachelor's in mass communication, media studies and advertising from HR. And then he co-founded Wildcard Advertising while you were still completing um, your bachelor's degree and then post-graduating you joined Shebang uh, where you were the head of consumer centricity. So after almost seven years at Shebang, um, he then went into the entrepreneurial world and started Mentrepreneur and then Creator. So have you got it right so far? No, I don't think so. Anybody has gotten right <laughs> and I don't think so. I will ever get it right. <laughs> um, it's, it's the entire it's the journey, right? Yeah. Uh, there's, there's never a destination. So uh, I think you got it from my LinkedIn <laughs> yes. and my LinkedIn said that I'm, I'm a man with many plans. So I, I'd love to experiment. I, I'd love to move to the next big thing. So it's, it's always a journey for, it's always been a journey for me. It's never yeah. the destination. So yeah, no, I have not got it right. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah, talking about all the entrepreneurial journeys you've had so far, we want to get into a quick little game to understand a little bit more about what they are. Sure. So this game is called the Twitter Pit Challenge. Now, you should change its name, but that's for a later <laughs> stage. Twitter is known for its 280 character limit on every tweet, which sometimes makes it a little difficult to convey your thoughts. And that's the challenge that we transfer to you, which is to explain to us Mentopreneur in under 20 seconds. And we won't make it that easy. You also need to use one hashtag and one emoji in your tweet. Okay. All right, so we're going to put a timer to sure. scare you a little bit. <laughs> cool. So three, two, one, go. All right, now? Yeah. Okay. So, so Mentopreneur is uh, the unagency that helps startups and small businesses take the lift off. And we are there till they're on autopilot. And um, uh, our vision is to uh, work with the brands that become the next Nifty 50 of the country. Um, hashtag, we are here for you, and a handshake emoji. Nice. You don't go over twenty seconds. It's <laughs> in, in all fairness, I, I asked the question. Why need to start now? So <laughs> I could get. How long is it? Are we like three seconds? No, oh, thirty seconds over. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's fine. Um, but there's a lot to unpack in um, entrepreneur as well. But before we get to that. Um, I wanted to go back to your like college days and talk about wildcard advertising. It was an agency that you started while you were still studying. And um, according to your LinkedIn, it seemed it was very successful given that you had clients from the US, Hong Kong, Singapore. So then why didn't you continue that after you graduated and started a, a job at Shaban? Yeah, so, um, so wildcard started off um, from a college project. So I always wanted to become an entrepreneur. I, I, my family's, uh, my you know, my family owns businesses, and um, you know, doing a job was never an option for me uh, because I had always seen growing up that okay, I have to have something of my own. Uh, you know, my grandfather had a; uh, they were into paper mills, um, where my father was into diamonds and is still into diamonds and jewelry. Um, so always having something of my own was was on the cards. So you know, one. One sort of project came across while I was studying at HR, where we had to actually brand a business. So take an existing business and rebrand it. And the whole process was so exciting to sort of reimagine the entire brand from scratch, 
uh, from their logo to identity. And I was like, hey, you know what? I, I kind of like doing this. So I spoke to a friend of mine, um, Yash, uh, who is, uh, you know, who was also like keen on doing something of his own. And we got together and you know what, like, hey, let's, let's help other brands do this. Um, so what started off as my college project ended up becoming uh, a small little business. And then, you know, you know what, uh, we decided that everybody's doing branding, everybody's doing logo, let's do something different. Um, so we actually, we actually went a step beyond and created something called as an experiential marketing company. Uh, where we used to get brands from abroad um, and of course different uh, geographies and help them set up with the entire experience end to end from right from the logo to what kind of uh, store design your brand should have to you know what kind of smell the store should have so things like that so which were so he was in he was studying in New York that time so he had those early access of experiential branding you know what the global players were doing so we we decided to sort of get that in India and we decided to sort of get uh, those kind of services in India. But this was early 2013 and it was way kind of ahead of its time. So we got we worked with, you know, NYU. We worked with uh, a couple of brands uh, that wanted to sort of establish in India some, you know, private like clothing label, clothing lines, um, you know, a, a fitness company. Um, you know, we had a we had what raw is now. We had another player back then. Uh, raw pressery juices. Yeah. So we we worked with a few brands, and you know people started to recognize us as we were different, uh, not providing the run of the mill services to them. Um, and uh, one thing led to the other, and we we sort of scaled that business to over um, you know eight nine brands. Then we had uh, five to five to six people. We had we were a remote company before remote company was cool. <laughs> so we had people working in Sweden. Uh, we had people working in in Bangalore, and that's what basically we we did. Then, and then once we started, once things were actually snowballing into something, we realized that, um, I mean, my friends and co-founders realized that they wanted the experience to go abroad and study. Uh, and this was the time when everybody was yeah. they wanted to just go abroad, get their master's degree, and all <laughs> of that. So I couldn't run the shops alone by myself. So we decided to sort of. Um, put a pin, in, pin on that project and uh, said, hey, if everybody's getting experience, let me also get some experience and because we started right out of college. Yeah. We had no, we, had, we were scrappy, completely scrappy, but we, we provided value uh, to our clients. So that's when I actually moved. I didn't go to Shebang directly. I, I went to JWT, uh, Wonder oh, Thompson. Yeah. Um, and that's when I got introduced to the mainline world. Mm. of how advertising <laughs> works and all of that. So that was like a small stepping stone towards, towards Shabang actually. Nice. And then, um, so you said like, yeah, you're right out of uh, college yeah. and like young, still like scrappy figuring it out. So like, what was like the biggest shock in terms of the business world to you at that point in time? Like, what were you surprised to know that this existed in like the business world or this is how things work? I think it, it, it didn't came as a shock to me because I'd seen my parents and yeah. my, my family work as, you know, they had their own yeah. setups. So it was, I just didn't expect the quantum of work that one person needs to do. Right from pitching to servicing to doing the work. Especially as a founder. To accounts, <laughs> to managing teams, everything, you know, you, you didn't know, okay, okay, you could hire an HR to do that. Yeah. Or, and of course, we didn't have the money. We were like, okay, hey, you know, we did our first branding project at 15,000 rupees. <laughs> and we were like, oh, wow, this is amazing. 15 <laughs> grand by like just making the logo and like, you know, helping them uh, do things that we love doing. And we are getting paid for it. And like, we were three of us and five grand, five grand. And we were like, wow, this is it. Like, you know, we're going to kill the branding world. <laughs> uh, and we also had a vision of, you know, how, so it was wild card. So we had a, our offices plan that okay you know our tables will have like a poker table it won't be like a normal <laughs> table we'll poker table or like we'll have you know uh, we'll have chairs with like dices and things like that so you know when you're just starting out that yeah. whole excitement yeah, of yeah, yeah. Uh, what you'd want to sort of grow it grow into that that actually kept us going no I, I mean i fully agree and there's like a bit of uh like a very sweet naivete to it which and i think that over time, it doesn't like go away. You just start having different goals. Yeah, um, I, I don't think so. I would define goals as 
as um, as a, it's a process it's not a destination exactly uh, you know yeah. goals evolve over time exactly. your needs change over time you know your ambitions change over time um so it was always an evolving uh, you know you you i went to branding then i you know i did mainline then i went to digital then i founded a, a small vertical within shebang which was branding and of course now i'm helping brands start scale up from scratch it's almost like a circle which has come come back after 12 years um you know because that's what literally what i do at mentorpreneur i help exactly, brands yeah. kick start and you know speaking of like 7 years of your life out of 12 which was at shebang yeah. uh and you would have been working with again natural mentors like harshal and akshay yeah. so and we've obviously had we've had you might have known ashesh shah ashesh yeah yeah so we've had him on the podcast as well before and he spoke about how like because he has an agency which is almost like a direct competitor mm-hmm. we kind of asked him like you know how was the transition out of shebang and like you know did yeah. you have a conversation with your seniors about it so the first question to you would would be when you were leaving shebang did you already have the idea for mentorpreneur and did you kind of talk with your team about it yeah so um to answer your question no i didn't i had i wanted to do something with the name mentorpreneur now i'll tell you how that <laughs> that 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 panned out so this was so my 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 professional journey has always been um every, like it's been evolving um so i started i started with jwt i started with valkar Right. Of course, I was scrappy, <laughs> uh, but then went on JWT, which was mainline. Um, then that was 2015, and that time digital was just coming up. Right. It was just like you know, Facebook had launched your ads, uh, your, your you know your the dashboards now Meta, um, mm-hmm. and so I was like, hey, you know what, mainline is dying. Let me try my hand at digital. So I went to digital. Then uh, this from 2015 until 2020. um is when digital was sort of growing growing and still growing but 2020 is when the startup ecosystem started mushrooming yep yeah uh, you know with you know the 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 funding news and with shark tank coming in and yeah. all of that um so we said you know what let's let's help startups so we've got experience of working with mncs and the large brands and we we've understood their blueprint and how how it works so let's sort of take that blueprint and help startups uh you know startups because i was a part of startup startup a has a lot of money funded startups funded yeah. startups yes but they <laughs> have a lot of excitement but they don't know how to spend that money yeah uh, and sometimes what happens is in figuring out figuring out they end up burning so much money without having the right guidance so we said you know what at shebang we work with the the bigger brands let's take that and help the startups so i started working with the startups and that's when covid hit and 2020 we were remote working and all of that so i was like hey startups don't need just um you know they don't need professional advice there's a lot of excitement that needs to be tamed that a lot of uh, you know vision setting milestone setting goal setting that needs to be done with them almost like what what mentors do exactly yeah. right uh, so that's how actually the name came up mentoring entrepreneurs uh, you know not just in their professional journey but also even in their personal life uh, you know because there's a when when you start a startup there's a lot of confusion chaos uh you know n- not having clarity in thoughts uh but sort of to tame that so you know you're not building a business right you're building yourself also as a, as and when you're gro- growing so mentoring entrepreneurs was something that i wanted to do and um, you know there are so there are two things that kind of fuel me and my goals is i like building businesses and I like building people uh and that's how sort of it 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 came together uh as mentorpreneur and i was like you know what 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 can i do with this <laughs> so i first first thing i went out is is i blocked the domain of course i yeah, blocked yes. all domains yes. you know that that that, yeah. uh, that that light goes off and i blocked all the domains and this was 2021 and i got married in 2021 at the end of 2021 i was like since i'm moving to my moving on to a new phase in my personal life it's time to sort of take the plunge in the profession nice. well. oh, wow. so that's how i was like And I was you're not here. you're not the type that oh I'm facing too much change in personal life so I'll be professional same no no you're like all in all in all in so be ek saath mein ho jayega and then so coming back to you know so you, um so you knew that you had to do something with the name entrepreneur and the kind of obviously your business keeps evolving and you figure out what you wanted to do but 
how did the conversation at shebang go was it just a straight up hey i'm leaving um non-descript resignation or was it like no, no. so it was it? never so firstly i was never treated or never acted like an employee at shebang because i was the i was one of the first you know part of the first early of course, founding yeah, yeah, day yeah. team uh it was always almost like so harshil and akshay they are and they always will be my mentors yes uh, because <laughs> like we have like I, whatever i have learned is yeah. in my profession life is 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 uh, because of shabang um and so it was not a straight up conversation but it was like hey you know what i i want to evolve um i want to do something of my own and see i'm a gujarati at the end of the day <laughs> i have to have something of my own right 100% um so i realized that and there were many other opportunities that came by while i was at shabang as well uh it was not that you know shabang or this Correct. there were multiple opportunities within shabang you know harshil was very kind to offer a couple of other roles to see where i could fit in um you know so he's always been helping people grow yeah. but my growth i realized that it was not within shabang so i i wanted to do something of my own and my vision was to uh, not have another agency because i would be stupid to start another agency and compete with with him uh <laughs> you know so like i would not do that of course um and i was very clear that i don't want to build another agency so and at that time i went back to my sort of wild card days and like why did i start something of my own is because and why did people come to me because they loved being they loved me being involved in their projects with agencies what happens is once you get to a particular size then you've got teams handling and and they the founders lack the the agency founders touch yeah. right and uh, with startup founders especially they don't operate the way mncs operate they don't have a set marketing team they don't have a set cmo uh, who's looking and taking yeah. the calls the founder wants you to be there and if i can't give that time then the why is the founder paying me at the end of the day so i said hey you know what i i, I don't really don't think so uh, you know shabang is great but i don't think so it's for me now um and that's how sort of kind of these and he was very supportive and we we still talk we still exchange <laughs> you know hi hellos all of that yeah. but like they have a very supportive culture as well yeah. in terms of like getting people to do grow like you said and also like letting yeah. them do what they want to do start their own thing it's that kind of environment yeah. that's given so that's pretty cool especially like um nowadays like sometimes it's difficult to get that kind of support yeah. in like a corporate setting so i guess like people yeah. in a more smaller team relatively no, help it's you yeah. start off you start off small because you are like a like you know that's the team that's yeah. the family right and you 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 grow into becoming a, a mega name with 1000 people across five cities uh but it's very difficult to keep that culture intact yeah um and with this company so i i forgot to mention that the reason why i went and i i signed up for shebang in the first place is that when i walked into the office on the first day Uh, it was almost like a conversation like harshil i'm tired at jwt not doing anything <laughs> yeah. what are you do- doing because harshil used to mentor me when i was at uh, wildcard when i started wildcard harshil was my mentor oh. and i interned at foxy moron before oh. harshil's ex agency yes. yes so that's how i was like you know this guy has something yeah. so when i decided to start shops at wildcard and move on from jwt i called up harshil saying that what are you doing you know let's yeah. chat he's like i'm starting shebang so come and meet me so i said okay let's so i went and i went to the current the headquarters yeah. and at that time there were like 20 25 people but when i saw the office the office space was a splendid 10000 square feet office yeah. <laughs> and i'm like hey, there's just 25 people wait so back then was it still the kamla mills yeah, yeah. the Kamla-Mils. same one the same okay, yeah. then i joined 2015 that was the office i i went to and mentally i had signed up ki boss this guy is going to do something correct and if i ride <laughs> with him i will reach somewhere yeah. and i will get to learn Like twenty to twenty three, what you want to just learn yeah. at that time. Correct. So he said, "I'm start. I want to start in creative, uh, my creative team, and I'm looking for somebody." So I said, "Great, but I can't do two things. I can't make PPTs, and I can't write scripts." He said, "Okay, that that's fine. We'll manage." And for seven years, I've only done write making making scripts <laughs> and doing PPTs. <laughs> so I think, and today I I feel I'm fairly good at it. Uh, and that was kind of the blessing in disguise yeah. that I was just. eager to learn 
uh, and grow with the team. Yeah, and making PPTs is a like hundred percent important it is. aspect. Like, I mean, you take from school, college, job. Now, like for me, in every single part of my life, a part of my daily week has been like making some or the other presentation. Yeah. No, it's very important. So yeah, now like you've obviously mentioned to us that your family has like many businesses, and you yourself have always been entrepreneurial, and that is seen with the fact that nine months after Mentorpreneur, you started Create Up. Yeah, um, roughly about that time. One, why, and how are you balancing it? So I get I get this question a lot. <laughs> uh, from from my family and my friends around. So, uh, create up again started with um, the need, right? Like the as I, as I spoke about evolution, how goals are evolving, even the industry is evolving. Right. Um, so you can't today term term yourself as just I'm a digital media agency or I'm a 100%. print media agency. Yeah. Today everybody's doing everything, and the clients are coming to you with an with a with a turnkey solution. In mind that I want to go to one person. Yeah. Now um, the screens shifted from landscape to all, like to portrait, <laughs> uh, with reels coming in, with uh, YouTube shots coming in, and uh, you know I've been fortunate to work on a lot of production related stuff, and I've seen the entire process of production, and it's, it's not easy for startups yeah. for small yeah. brands. It's not easy for you to just. Create a nice looking film because uh, it's expensive. Yeah, it is. And with reels coming in, uh, you know anybody who with a decent screen presence, with a decent set of content, could get in front of the camera, convey the message, and that could go viral. So we we decided that hey, there is something uh, people want short form content which they can't afford in uh, you know by doing like large scale production. So we saw so a friend of mine, um, uh, you know, friend slash colleague of mine, uh, Hardik, who is also uh, also the founder of the Works, uh, which is an agency right right across Europe. Uh, oh, yeah! Wow, so, you have them. Just mental note. <laughs> actually, now they've shifted. They shifted to <laughs> Churchgate uh, as of last week only. Um, so we said that hey, let's do this. Um, so we started off. We didn't have a brand name. We had nothing. We just had a few clients. We we like okay. We'll come to you. We'll do reels for you. And they were like, "Why reels?" I was like, "No, that's picking up like you, the founders of uh, you know YouTube and uh, your uh, Instagram have said that they are changing the algorithm. Yeah. They are pushing reels. So we'll do reels for you. So again, scrappy. We put things together. <laughs> we called our friends saying that hey, we want to model." Uh, in the reel, just read this line and in front of the camera, see how it looks. Uh, you know, we called like a photographer and we did a few reels for them. And like, hey, and people were paying for it. So what what happened at social, like with social media retainers, you know, like a set number of posts and all of that, changed into real retainers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That like we'll do like ten reels for you, and the and reels right from every, like from your thought, your concept. To models, to you know, the, those fifteen seconds on screen, but there's a lot of thing that goes behind those fifteen seconds. You know, in fact, I was recently listening to a talk by Kofail of Superfly Films, and she said that one of the very important things she, she was talking about generally, like a bunch of things, but one of the points was how the glitz and glamour of advertising is not what it once was. Mm. And when you compare it to like a film, right? What a film does in two hours. A TVC has to do it in two minutes. Exactly. Right. So it's it's a different kind of skill set. Yeah. And now with reels, you need to do that in thirty seconds. You yeah. need to make someone feel something in, in thirty, 30 seconds. seconds. So you can't compare and say that hey, that's a two-hour film. Yeah. That's tougher to do than this thirty seconds. Absolutely. Film. Yeah. It's actually Not like yeah. each is their own direction entirely. Yeah. So I mean, that's what again the need evolved, the algorithm evolved, the requirement of the clients evolved. So we said that hey, let's start something called Create Up. I mean, of course, we we named it after. Uh, <laughs> this after time it was the other way around. This time it was <laughs> yeah. the other way around. We had the clients in the business first, and then we sort of decided to uh, sort of launch it formally as a as a as an offering, uh, which was very different from from what Mentorpreneurs uh, was doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, to answer the second question on how do you manage both the things. Uh, Honest answer: It's not easy. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not easy. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, you are just juggling between two mindsets. 
to different mindsets to different challenges to different set of opportunities to different teams right. all together uh but again like you know it's the it's the, it's it's just i don't know you, you call it it's my thrive or like you know what i like doing i like i like to keep myself busy with with something or the other so whatever extra time i have let's do something and there's one more thing which i'm working <laughs> on right now so i'll tell you at the right time so you know um the way i've seen it with like at least this is just something that i have noticed is when there's multiple like founders uh, sorry a founder with multiple businesses what they like what the difference is and the way to balance it is that one it's either a business that requires you to have a similar network to your first one which you know in the case of, for you it's like an entrepreneur and creative are both i'm assuming industry agnostic so your ideal um client is just someone who either owns a business or is running a business yeah. right so the network aspect doesn't change which helps a lot because yeah. that's what you need to build up a business or your first business is running on autopilot enough for you to delve entirely into your second yeah so of these two buckets i'd presume you know for you it's the first one where the network is still the same so you can just yeah. kind of go back to the people you know it's again providing the turnkey solution to the client right yeah. like you start 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 them off with a brand you launch them up and then they'll need content to sustain right so we also giving that then after that they'll need again like uh they're launching something they'll again need strategy they'll again need go to market they'll again need a media plan again again they'll need content yeah, yeah so today you you live in a content world yeah. like from a from you know somebody selling salwar kameez in a small boutique mom and pop shop in in ludhiana <laughs> to like a to like a parley ji or like a <laughs> png or an hul selling like you know yeah, fmcg product everybody needs content um and everybody needs quick content so with creative yeah. um you know we are we are very clear that we are not your your high end production very high key you know each frame is marked out kind of a of a production <laughs> company we are quick content you know we 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 live in the world of uh, how the algorithm works is you don't have to be perfect yeah. you just need to be consistent with it so that's what we offer clients that we we whip out like a batch of 10 reels in a span of a week wow nice all from conceptualization until it like you hit share draft <laughs> on on instagram yeah all within yeah. 10, 10 days yeah fair and like i think um you, also the algorithm is so difficult like you don't know what it act like what actually hits off because like the most random videos will go viral and like the most like curated ones might not yeah. hit a certain point so it's like the, the steven bartlett thing you sent me oh yeah. sorry was that steven bartlett or was it uh, steven yeah it's steven bartlett yeah, steven Martin, you, yeah. yeah. What, like how so oh the the how you should like he does he keeps it up keeps so up so steven bartlett the he's the um he also has a podcast called diary of a ceo mm. and he was talking about how like he he hasn't nailed it like he doesn't know the exact way to create the best reel but like he's testing on a daily basis so he's like from 6 months like in 6 months time if you ask me how to do it i might not know but 6 months after that i'll know what like the what was happening 6 months ago because i would have tested 100 yeah. different things to see yeah. what is working because it's such a evolutionary process yeah so so it takes me back to that that famous quote um that that nikola tesla yeah. um said that uh, you know i didn't I, when i invented the light bulb um it was not I didn't figure out the how how to invent it the first time. I figured out hun- thousand ways of not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't remember the exact quote right now, but it's again a process. Yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, similar to that. Like just try, try different things. Yeah. And like he, like every episode, he tries to do something different so that he knows what works for his audience and what doesn't, and what works for each platform and what doesn't. So he was like, it's a very exper- experimental. job that he's trying to do you know the way i think of it is it's kind of like if you get a stock market tip from your bank pardon it's already too late yeah. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like on reels yeah. if someone is telling you what the algorithm yeah. is doing it's already yeah. too late yeah <laughs> yeah and it it works differently for different brands a yeah. uh, same format for a for a lingerie company might not work for a kids clothing company 100% yeah. you know so it's different for every brand uh 
there's no way to there's really like anybody is saying that okay these are the five tips to make your reel viral and all yeah sure try it because they they have you know they have tried it before but it's not a guarantee that it will work for you yeah, yeah we've yeah, tried it we've tried it we've tried many things we keep switching it up <laughs> but i think like yeah the idea is to not get into a space where you're like pushing stuff out too often but like just where you're switching it up and trying things yeah. often enough that you can pick and choose which ones work exactly Yeah. Which I don't think we've reached that level yeah, yet, yeah, but we do so far. Change will help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I, we can see that by the way. Hey, I, I come, think, I come in, I switch things up, yeah. and and see if it works yeah, for the better. Let's see if it works. <laughs> yes. Let me know if it works. Yes, definitely. But like, um, like you said, for entrepreneur, you try to get involved in every uh, yeah. project there is, um, because the founders want your opinion and like the way and want to work with you. and then you have create up as well where you also get involved so and a third thing that you're working on so like how do you figure how like where to give your time and also also like how do you think about it in a way where there is scale for each part of it like for entrepreneur as well like for you to get involved in every project at some point they might hit a yeah, yeah. wall so, where you can't so um, we are very clear that that when when i started mentorpreneur that we will not pick up more than five projects in the entire year oh yeah so with mentorpreneur we are very selective about the projects we work on we are very selective about the founders we work on work with and we are very selective about the kind of work we do with them uh, so we only pick up four to five projects that we go completely deep in and as i said right my my goal is to work with brands that are the next in 50 50 yeah. there are only 50 brands i need to work with <laughs> so yeah. i'm very selective about yeah. the brands the people the founders you know so there's this one company that we work with uh, called charge zone they are india's fastest growing ev charging network and uh, they are giving you know the tatas the run for their money Uh, oh, wow. A private, own, privately owned brand, and funded. I'm assuming. Yes, of course, funded. I work with <laughs> startups, um, and you know, so that's one brand. Then uh, we worked with this brand called Yoga Life dot com, uh, which is um, which is a health and health tech startup started by the ex CFO of Nike, um, Katrina Kaif and K L Rahul. They are the part oh. like co investors, co owners of the brand. so you know very selective like if they are, and their mission was you know building a healthier and happier healthier and happier india now i have to resonate with the founders mission and the work they are doing for me to be involved in it. um and to answer your question how do you how do you split your time and yeah um you cannot do it alone um we have i've been fortunate enough to have a great set of team members um and you know Uh, colleagues or like you know your t- vendors your partners that we work with and uh, there's there's a system and a process which is set uh, which which allows me to sort of plug in plug out at the right time without the entire system getting hampered nice. yeah uh, that's the goal i mean yeah. honestly that's, I mean, that's, cool. that's the plan because so with i mean as i said i don't want to build another agency uh, what with mentorpreneur with create up what we're trying to do is we are trying to productize service um where you know you get that same level of importance involvement that you're paying for uh from people and from 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 teams uh without it being hampered so having a selective process works been fortunate enough to be in that that side of life where i can select the project yeah. Yeah. that i would want to work on uh slash work with so yeah that's a very privileged state it is it is i will not take take away from the yeah. privilege that i have that i get to select my own projects so what would you say are like three things that have to be in like the project that you select or like the team that you are going to work founders with? Yeah. number one the founders vision um the product or the service that they are working on uh, i try not to work on the same domain another time okay so if i'm working on an EV charging company. I will not mo- do not go to another yeah. EV charging company or something in that space. And the third most important thing is their attitude towards you. Um, are they treating you as a vendor or are they treating treating you as a partner? That's very important for me uh, because I am very clear that hey, I'm not your another agency. Yeah, I'm not an agency partner. I'm not your vendor who will send you a bill at the end of the month for the retainer that that you're paying. for me it's more important that do you 
see that same vision as I am seeing for your brand and the vice versa. So it's almost like, you know, if you, because we work with three to four projects, we are working for an entire year yeah. on one project. So you have to see that compatibility. It's, it's not like dating. We don't date with clients. <laughs> yeah. we, we marry them right. at the same time. We are in a polygamous relationship <laughs> with four or five clients at the same time, but we are all in. Over the course of like, you know, how many of brands you work with, even if it's all 50 of them, and you're obviously looking across many different industries. So if you just take two of the ones that you mentioned, one is like yoga plus tech because it's a website and then you also have an EV charging yeah. uh, network. And because you're going, like advertising looks at a brief and then the company, mm. you look at the company, the vision, the founder. Yeah. So you're going a lot more in depth into the, you know, what they're doing actually. Yeah. So obviously there's a whole bunch of knowledge that you're getting out of it personally. Crazy amount of And one outlet of that knowledge is of course your next uh, project that you, the next company you work with, you're taking all that experience with you in every next yeah. project. But have you given any thought as to what else you want to do with that? So for example, you know, whether it's a podcast or something like, or, you know, even on LinkedIn, etc. like, is there some kind of outlet you want to have for that knowledge or is that something you're not? Uh, no, I have not really thought about that because as I said, I'm still in my learning phase. Learning phase. Um, I, I don't consider myself arrived <laughs> or done that or got it right. Uh, I'm still learning and uh, the day I feel like, okay, I have something to contribute to somebody. I would, I would want to do that in a much more deeper manner. Um, you know, like I understand that, you know, uh, you know, there are podcasts, there are LinkedIn, the articles and all of that. But today I just feel that I'm just, I'm just soaking in right now. Uh, there's still a lot for me to, you know, learn before I can give. Okay. You know, so lot, lot to get more to more in the getting <laughs> zone right now than the giving zone. Interesting. Fair enough. It's really cool that like you work with so many industries, like there's not a monotonous day in your life. No, never. At <laughs> Shabang also, we... So uh, I recently counted that over the last 12 years, I've worked with 98 brands. Oh, wow. In some of the other capacities. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, because I was in the creative team, I was head of creative. So I had like all the brands with me and my yeah. teams were handling, but I was still involved. So I worked on ice creams in the morning and like motor oil in the evening, <laughs> real estate tomorrow to like, I don't know, like a, like a kid's brand in the evening. Cool. We'll move on to our next segment now. So this one's called Two Truths and a Lie. Okay. And to basically understand more about your journey with, you know, whether it's with Mentopreneur or with Creator, what you have to do is give us three statements from which to explain the big moments at either of the companies or your personal life. That's up to okay. you. And one is a false statement. So these can okay. be challenges, achievements, just facts. So two are true and one is a lie. We will be then guessing the lie. Right. Okay. So I have represented my country on an international level. Um, I couldn't talk in English up until the 10th grade. Um, and I like traveling. That's actually hard. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I'm going to go with the second one only. But you, yeah. You say? Just to be different. To give a different answer, I'll say um, that you like traveling is a lie. So you don't like traveling. Yeah, I don't like traveling that much. Oh, interesting. Yeah. How come? Just I, 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 I hate the travel. Yeah. I, I like to see other places, but yeah. I hate the travel part. I don't know if it makes <laughs> sense. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, like I hate, I hate the airports. <laughs> I hate the train journeys. I, I just don't like it. It's too taxing. But is it like the place that you go to rewarding enough? To? Yes, but I'll think twice. Like, are they, so it has to really be worth it. Yeah, yeah, it has to really be worth it. I love airports. Yeah. I can spend my life in airports and be happy. Yeah. I love traveling. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just love airports. But obviously, like, I also say this because in the last few years, I haven't been to like that many countries where the airport infrastructure is not that great. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I love just exploring airports and like, 
eating at different places because mm-hmm. you get like local fast food yeah not like local food but like local fast food so i like you know i find interest in all of those things yeah, yeah see i like that, that. like i like learning like once i'm at the place yeah then it's fine yeah <laughs> but the whole travel part is something that i hate yeah I don't yeah I don't enjoy the travel that much yeah. but like I don't think too much into it but I love the travel like to go to a new place and explore the city yeah that's like fun. I love that about. that's fun that's yeah fun. I mean like it can be like a small town also yeah. but I like enjoy going in yeah I'm very boring yeah. oh, wait, wait, we completely skipped over the fact <laughs> that you couldn't speak English until that's true what what yeah that's true so I I couldn't speak in English uh, up until the tenth grade. because um i studied um in a in a gujarati medium school so i was in new era before i joined at the oh, birla okay. uh, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. of course that was uh, you know an ssc like a state board state yeah. board school and um, I mean, that was just the environment right like your friends were good jews yeah. your uh, family like my family is good jews so we speak gujarati and english was just a language for us to get marks So we never had a had a real conversation with in English in English, oh. apart from the English teacher. Oh. So it was very difficult for me. And uh, so, how was it then in eleventh grade for you? Like it was very daunting at the start. I'm sure, yeah. I uh, you know because uh, I I got into a uh, into an international board yeah. uh, with uh, you know kids coming from different different schools. Some from international yeah. schools. Uh, I'm coming from you know boarding schools that. That that spoke English and we're like, okay, hey, like your people talk in English. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they they have a conversation in English, and um, of course it was difficult because you feel out of place. Uh, but then again, like you know, you take it up as a challenge. Then I took uh, English language as uh, as my as my SL. Yeah. Um, and then I of course did uh, um, you know classes and coaching classes and elocution classes and things like that. To sort of get get to yeah, where, yeah, like there was no way I would have ever guessed that after having spoken to people like last hour. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, it, it was it was challenging at the start, but like I'm just know. trying to imagine how you learn English, like in Gujarati. Yeah, like that, like it's and sometimes the English English teacher spoke to us in Gujarati. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine how that. Like how hard it. You know, the, and the, there's always that thing that as you grow older, it becomes tougher and tougher to yeah. learn anything because yeah. your body becomes more and more habituated Correct. to yeah. whatever you're used to doing. And language is a thing that follows that trend yeah. very strong. And English, yeah, and English was. exactly. So it was, um, it was a, it was a journey process. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, but yeah, but yeah. So we can move on to the next game, and that's called Red Flags. Uh, we're gonna give you three hypothetical situations, and each of them is composed with two things that are going good, and then one thing that is not so good, which is the red flag. Okay. Um, you have to assume that these statements are true, and we've adapted them for you and your companies. And um, you have to pick one situation that you would rather be in, and then tell us why mm-hmm. you chose that particular situation. So, situation one: Mentorpreneur has grown to ninety employees. Um, Create Up is now the go-to place in the market for high-quality content and is getting requests beyond its capacity. But it is getting difficult for you to balance between these two companies. Um, situation two: Mentorpreneur has uh, gone international and has clients from North America and Europe. Create Up can now create content in foreign languages like French and Spanish, etc. But Create Up is facing tough competition from AI-based generators. um which are much more affordable situation 3 uh um, clients have seen a significant increase in profits and social presence which they have attributed to working with mentorpreneur the launch of pool and scout are an extreme success and they create uh, create up to the next level and your relationship with your mentors end yeah so um i think i'd go with situation 1 okay. um mentorpreneur has grown to 90 employees but i'll just change that a little bit because we never want to get to that scale yeah um mentorpreneur will always be a lean team that's what i figured when you said like five we will always always be a 10 member team but those 10 the 10 horses that we have yeah they they're going to absolutely top absolutely notch. top notch uh you know sort of sort of team creative is now going uh, now the go to place in the market for high quality content and getting requests beyond its capacity we are facing that right now 
uh it's a good problem to have <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but as as we uh, we are also pivoting into a product which is the pool and scout which mm-hmm. i mentioned which is coming up soon um and uh, so so we might actually uh not pivot but change our focus onto onto the product side of things uh but at the same time we're trying to build the service side uh okay. so that that goes on autopilot and it is difficult for you to balance between the two companies it will never get easy so like it was to tell it will never get easy now elon go dekh lo yaar he is managing three companies yeah so, but that's the thing right? like i feel like it it just it doesn't become easier it just changes because the moment it becomes easier as you said you're going to pick up something else yeah, yeah. so it's not going to become easier <laughs> it's not going to it's it never will and what's the excitement in if it's easy yeah right like that easy excitement lasts for like one two weeks when you go relax yeah. a little bit it's like a vacation yeah and then you're like okay now what's next yeah. and you like to keep yourself busy so you're always yeah. going to find something to fill your time up with, yeah so. some on to the next big on thing time. yeah on to the next big thing. not yeah, this next know. thing next big, big thing, thing yeah. next so big thing. <laughs> cool let's move on to our last segment this is very self explanatory it's a rapid fire oh wow well, i love cool. rapid and i i feel like you be like brilliant with this Um so let's just kick it off. How many days of leave have you taken in the last year? None. Your proudest moment with mentor now. When I made my wife my partner. Uh-huh. What was the one time you felt like you let create up down? Um when I didn't show up for a couple of shoots. I'd love to be there on the shoot as much as I can and I I knew one of the times where I had to be there but I couldn't be there and not because of the work just I was not feeling well so that's why I was like okay I'm just let down all right one company you really want to work with like a brand yeah uh coke yeah it's a good one <laughs> what is the scrappiest thing you've done to build your business I've built my business in scrappy, a scrappy way and I you think this out thinking what is the least scrappy thing what is the most meticulous thing you've done to build your business I have um so it's not scrappy scrappy but um, just to save money we've got we've gotten um, like we worked out of starbucks like starbucks yeah, and cafe yeah, shops yeah. and all yeah. of that um just for like for free without buying anything oh <laughs> like i don't yeah. know if this is that scrappy yeah, or not scrappy. it is it, yeah. is. it oh. takes a lot to like Yeah. Get into that. No, so what we did was, you know, Starbucks has these uh, these reusable cups. Yeah, you buy one. So we invested in one <laughs> reusable cup. A uh, couple of people, you know, so everybody every time they go to Starbucks, the team sits and they have their cups there, and we used to fill it with water, <laughs> and keep on sipping. I don't know if that that's crap. Yeah, that's crap. That's a very yeah. good example of snappy. Yeah. What's the weirdest place from where you have worked? Weirdest place, not weird, but. Um, I have worked from the foothills of Mussoorie. Oh, nice. Um, so I was on holiday, and I had I had to get on a on a call, and we were going for a trek. So oh, I was nice. at like the base, like the base of the yeah. mountain. There's snow capped mountains. I'm taking a call. So literally, like that scene in Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara. Yeah. The guy takes yeah. the call from from the car. I was there. <laughs> Not bad. What was the biggest sacrifice to make entrepreneur possible? Time. Sacrifice Classic. time yeah. to build a business that would earn me more time. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, nice. What was an oh shit moment for you, whether good or bad? For business, like related to work. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh shit! I need to do everything by myself. <laughs> so going accounts, back to one star accounts. <laughs> accounts. That yeah. was you know accounts, yeah. HR, <laughs> team hiring. GST payments, TDS payments, correct, salary correct, credit. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh shit! We are back again. <laughs> yeah, you do it all, and then you're thinking, "Ki mani ka ho gaya," and then you realize all the next month's deadlines are. Yeah, because when you're working for somebody, when you're working at like yeah. a job, you've got teams to do it. Like you just send an email, <laughs> it's done. You hear that email comes to you. <laughs> oh, you send an email saying, "No, no, change this, change this, and you know, so I'm using this. Be easy yeah. now. Like, damn, it's not that easy. Yeah, that's all shit." <laughs> Your emotion when you first fire someone. See, I, I hate firing. Like, and and if, while I was at my wildcard days or whatever, I don't fire. So I don't hire for 
for aptitude i hire for attitude so you know i, I feel key at like aptitude can be learned but attitude can't so if so 99% of the time i don't i don't get people uh, on board if they don't match the app, the attitude but, yeah uh, so I, the, i've i've hardly fired a few people i'm kind of similar as well yeah there's like yeah. to me a few key traits and one of which is always motivation yeah um and then i think that you know, the rest you pick it up yeah. no one has not picked it up so you'll be fine correct correct everybody's coachable as long as they want to be coachable exactly yeah. so what did slash will you do with your first profit what i did with my i gave it to my daddy oh nice uh yeah it was my first salary uh yeah. not profit but like same thing yeah. income uh, no income. that was stipend another foxy moron so uh-huh. i gave it to my daddy so that 5000 you made with wildcard this was before so foxy oh, was before oh. wildcard ah oh, nice so <laughs> that was my stipend 3500 rupees i used to get uh Do you remember what you did with the five thousand rupees from Wildcard? Of uh, my branding project, yes. Um, I clearly remember. I spent it on the team, oh, so we all went out for lunch, um, and uh, we had this big celebration. Nice. Say, hey, we made profit. Come, let's go and enjoy it <laughs> with the team who worked yeah. on it. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Do you prefer books or podcasts? Books. I buy the notebooks. I buy. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Morning, morning. And what's your favorite social media? Favorite social media would be Instagram. Okay. So that concludes the rapid fire, but we're not quite at the end yet. Okay. We have one last thing. So we ask every guest to ask our next guest a question. Okay. And so we're going to ask you. Well, our previous guest is going to ask you that question. Oh. Okay. Uh, so uh, my question for the next guest is. How many investors have rejected funding to you? Have you had investors? This would not be applicable to me. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> because I help the the Correct. brands get investors. Yeah. This is one. This is the first time it's happened though. But one flaw of not telling the guest who the next guest is. Yeah. Um. What if we flip it to say, if you were raising investment, hmm. how many investors would you go to? and take rejections from before yeah. you stop you know if for the sake of the answer um i think startups should be in a position to to evaluate their investors how the investors evaluate them um because um it's very easy to say then actually do it but you are going to ask money but at the same time you should you should see if the startup it, money everybody can provide but a a vision a partner only a few yeah. people can yeah. and just in order for you to just go and get money uh, that should not be your goal yeah. so startups should evaluate their investors as well as they are doing doing their due diligence on them so that's whatever one advice to the startup yeah. startup founders who are raising money and you know with with something like this is You're right. Like it's it is tougher to do that because let's say you get ten rejections, you get into a space where you're like almost thinking, okay, whoever says yes, I'll take it. Yeah. But uh, it's always good to like remind yourself, hey, no. Yeah. No, I need to Correct. wait and like reach. Like out. imagine like you're building a baby, right? Would you sell your baby to anybody, or would you let anybody come into your house and play with your baby? No, you won't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So you have to be more like. Protective. protective about your baby than than anybody else. Well, agree. A lot of founders don't necessarily think that way. Because yeah. when you start out that position, way, you kind of forget. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's also like a lot of times funding is also out of necessity. So when you're in yeah. that position, yeah. you're That's not really the desperation yeah. you need. You know, to be honest, I have personally. I don't know. You call it the lack of knowledge, or as I said, Eric, you know, I'm quite ignorant about this when it comes to a few things. but i have never understood the business of burning cash <laughs> and raising funds and burning cash yep yeah so people have built businesses bootstrap yeah correct you know i have seen that with my family i have seen that with you know so yeah. many friends and their families this startup culture this st- whole you know the jargon and the yeah. the buzzwords around raising fund series a to you know x million dollars to you know just acquiring customers burning cash is 
is i don't fathom it it, so, it, it, it works in the tech business it works in a lot of other capex heavy businesses but if you really want to build a business from scratch bootstrap you can do that you take zoho for can, example you can yeah zoho has not raised a single penny but look at where zoho is you know and the thing is so the the reason why we call ourselves break non even is that like one of the reasons is that historically a break even point was the measure of success for a business right, right. if you tell someone i'm going to reach break even in 2 years or in 3 years but like, okay that's good because yeah. then you're going to start turning a profit yeah Today there is nothing like that. Like Uber, ridiculous valuation, and the idea is that like yeah, sure you can like burn cash and build a business. Uber is a real business, yeah. right? It is revenue positive and all of those things. Right. So for us also, it's kind of like almost a satire, saying that the reason why we call it breaking on even is even we don't know what the measure of a successful business could be on day one. Yeah. So it's kind of just like hey, that's but you're looking at business that. from a very commercial point. Yeah, that's if you true. take that the commercial true. out of out of the business, right? There are so many intangibles that that you you do while while you're building a business, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's so much employment you you generate. There's a lot of culture that you create. Yes, profit is the end goal of your business, uh, and making money is the end goal of your business. But founders and businesses of today fail to understand that that profit is not the only thing. Of course, right? You're if you're not delivering, so you know, in in Mentopreneur's intro deck. we have the the first slide that that says uh helping you build value over valuation mm. uh so you know so that is something that that the first deck that's yeah. the first slide that somebody says and that's that's something that sets the level straight that you're starting a business with not the agenda to make money to solve a bigger purpose to i mean to work towards a bigger purpose to yeah. solve a bigger problem cuz then the money will come like if you're money doing something money yeah, so money is consequence. just a by product yeah. of your business yeah. your actual product is creating value and the the sole reason why you started out and you ask any successful founder they'll say that no it's not because of the money yeah and any anyone that's like truly passionate about like what they're doing what they're doing so yeah that i guess concludes our final segment thank you awesome. so much it's awesome. been yeah, it absolutely lovely yeah. having you yeah. and it was is great we hope you enjoyed it yeah i loved it i loved it. <laughs> i i don't really like talk much <laughs> otherwise but oh nice this is this is good awesome